and welcome to the Cook County Health and Hospital System Community Health Hotline. As a reminder, if you need help with health care or need to make an appointment, you can call the Cook County Health and Hospital System at 312-864-0200. We're thrilled to be joined today with Dr. Edward Lynn. He's the Chairman of Obstetrics and Gynecology at the Cook County Health and Hospital System. Dr. Lynn, welcome. Nice to be here. We're thrilled to have you. So um, before we get started, I would like to know, tell us a little bit about the broad array of uh, health care services that your department's, um, uh, department provides. So the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology, I'm going to use the term OBGYN because I think Perfect. a lot of people understand that, um, provides the classic array of women's health services. Uh, and we try to encompass the life cycle of a woman. So from the time that a woman is starting to go into adulthood, um, we certainly have a very active family planning program for, um, for young reproductive age women, and we have a very robust obstetrical services that takes care of um, women of all types of uh, needs in terms of the medical and obstetrical needs during, during pregnancy. Um, we also have a full array of gynecologic services and, and including uh, gynecologic cancers, um, a relatively new subspecialty in our field called urogynecology or advanced pelvic medicine. And this is for women who typically have bladder control issues or have what we call pelvic organ prolapse where mm -hmm. organs start to descend and uh, can cause women discomfort. And uh, gynecologic malignancies is another area that uh, we actually have quite a large volume of patients that we take care of um, in, that er in, that, in that area. In terms of our obstetrical service, uh, I want to stress that uh, we are what we call a level three perinatal center. So we are able to handle the complete array of high risk pregnancies or high risk newborn babies. And this is a designation that we have uh, received from the state. Okay. And uh, we are uh, very proud of uh, this achievement, and it is one of the, the areas that we feel a very great need for the patients in our community. What kind of conditions would make a pregnancy high risk? Well, um, if, if you think about it, any medical problem that a woman has before she gets pregnant often contributes to increased risk during her pregnancy. Hmm. So classically, high blood pressure, diabetes, which are very common um, in our community today. Um, the number one high-risk condition is prematurity. So women who go into preterm labor and deliver babies that are um, too small uh, to really do well on their own. And that's where our colleagues in neonatology, so this is a specialty that takes care of, of, of high-risk newborns and they've done remarkable things in order to help these babies survive and uh, to achieve um, a, a reasonably nice lifestyle. Excellent. What kind of specialties do you have on hand as a level three perinatal center? So um, I mentioned neonatology. So we have the full array of the ability to take care of preterm babies. We also have the availability of uh, pediatric surgeons in case the babies have defects that need to be corrected. Um, we have a very advanced anesthesia team. Um, in our obstetrical unit, we literally have anesthesia living with us. So they can provide uh, appropriate pain management uh, to women in labor uh, using uh, all of the techniques and especially uh, state-of-the-art uh, techniques like epidural anesthesia where a woman can then have a uh, comfortable delivery but still be alert and not be overly medicated which is what I, I think the, the great achievement is. Mm -hmm. And these doctors are also um, they have a subspecialty in anesthesia for taking care of small babies if they need that. And then there's a full array of pediatric subspecialists who may or may not have to be involved with, uh, with these newborns if they have problems like cardiology uh, gastroenterology, so the digestive system in the newborn sometimes has problems. Mm -hmm. uh, infectious diseases and, and uh, the whole, again, full gamut of being able to take care of, um, of infants at risk. So as a level three perinatal center, you receive patients from across Cook County. 
uh, who might need those high risk services. Is that yes, right? um, and actually, um, uh, the we have a group of hospitals that are in our perinatal network. So, in addition to providing an opportunity for them to send their high risk patients, because let's say a woman comes to a local community hospital, but she's in preterm uh, labor, or she's having another medical type condition, which would be considered a, a major high-risk issue, uh, they may make a decision to transport the patient to us. And, and in addition, we provide educational services to these hospitals, and we try to assist them in providing the highest level of care within their capabilities uh, based on the types of physicians they have as well as uh, facilities. Excellent. Uh, what kind of, uh, of services or things can a physician help a woman who's pregnant do to reduce the risk of complications in her pregnancy? That's a, that's a, a wonderful question and unfortunately um, we often lose the opportunity of being able to um, counsel patients adequately before they get pregnant. Um, Pre-pregnancy planning is an extremely important. As I said before, if a woman has medical conditions, her pregnancy will be much more successful if those conditions are well managed. Mm -hmm. So again, I'll talk about the diabetic, I'll talk about the patient with high blood pressure. If they're under control and doing well, in general, they do better uh, with their pregnancy. So identifying risk factors that are modifiable or treatable and then trying to help the patient remain healthy uh, during, during the pregnancy. Another very important area is genetics. Um, you know, the, that, this field is really 21st century medicine that is rapidly, rapidly expanding. So uh, we realize that there are babies that may have certain types of, uh, I'm going to use the term inborn errors of metabolism, which is an old fashioned term, meaning that they have a genetic predisposition to have a condition uh, that either may be life-threatening or severely impair the baby. We now are able to make these diagnoses if a mother's carrying these genes before she even gets pregnant. Wow. So looking, looking at the family history, now depending on the type of genetic abnormality, um, sometimes it's strictly a numbers game and you realize what the probability, but also we are now alerted to try to make the diagnosis in the baby often before the baby is born. And this gives our pediatric colleagues the opportunity to, uh, let's say, supplement these babies with certain types of enzymes uh, that would prevent them from becoming ill mm -hmm. or avoidance of certain things. And, uh, and this is rapidly expanding. So we think that's extremely important. We also realize that women uh, are having babies at later ages. And then, you know, we have a complex modern society Many women are delaying childbearing until they are, you know, situated in their personal lives, their career, school, and um, so as women get older, certain types of chromosomal, that's not a gene, but the chromosome is where the genes are located. There are certain types of chromosomal disorders um, which, um, you know, may need to be diagnosed and the patient has to make a decision as to um, whether or not they want to continue the pregnancy or not based on this. Um, and uh, th that, that's probably, you know, the area that's the oldest in, uh, in reproductive genetics. And um, a lot of it has to do with counseling and, and uh, you know, explaining the options to the patient. Mm -hmm. What can a woman do herself uh, before considering becoming pregnant to make sure that she's healthy? Okay, great question. So, um, Let's talk about the prime reproductive years, and that's probably in the 20s. That's when women tend to do really well. Uh, once you get in, into the 30s, sometimes medical conditions, uh, let's say a woman is genetically programmed to have, such as high blood pressure, may start mm -hmm. ma manifesting itself. So again, a real good medical evaluation. If a woman is thinking about getting pregnant, I, I advise it, a real good medical evaluation try to identify any medical problems that the patient may have. Again, see if these can be treated. Uh, let's say a woman uh, is carrying a little extra body weight, which is very common uh, in today's society, and you can use me as an example. Um, 
that's a really good time to diet and to start your physical fitness activity is before you get pregnant. Not that you can't continue it once you are pregnant, but it's still better to do it before you get pregnant. Might be a little harder. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but the, um, so you get conditioning. Um, all, I, I really strongly recommend that women look at all their vaccinations. You know, a classic example is rubella, sometimes called German measles. Uh, we know that that infection can cause birth defects in the baby. So we always recommend that women be evaluated to make sure they have adequate immunity. Um, that's, you know, and again, nowadays, majority of people get their immunity through vaccines in childhood, not through catching the disease. And you can apply the same thing to chickenpox or varicella, uh, where we have vaccination. Another big area is hepatitis, hepatitis B. Um, this is a scary disease which can be transmitted to a newborn. And if you're fully vaccinated, that will protect you and the baby. And, and so there's a series of infectious diseases that we look at. We also recommend screening for certain infectious diseases that we know may be problematic for the baby. Uh, an example would be syphilis. Still exists in our society. It's an ancient disease. But this is one of those infections that will cross the placenta and get into the baby system and can cause birth defects uh, in the baby. So we always do a full battery of tests uh, to make sure, because this is treatable. And you know, similar other sexually transmissible infections are treatable. The other area where we have made huge strides is with HIV. Um, it's very important that we identify women who are HIV positive uh, because once they get pregnant, we recommend a treatment regimen that's been extraordinarily successful in preventing transmission of that infection to the baby. And we actually have quite a robust program uh, through our core center, mm -hmm. um, you know, in, in the county health system, uh, because, you know, this is a, a disorder that does exist. I mean, it's, it, we, you don't have to go very far to find it in our society, but it's something that we can offer our patients. And then I also recommend patients look at their social situation, their financial situation, because there may be an optimum time to have a baby, and maybe it's not the right time to have a baby. And, and that's where I'd recommend, you know, our family planning program uh, to help women plan their pregnancies. Now, what you may or may not be aware, and the public certainly, I'm not sure you understand, is that right around half of all pregnancies are unintended in the United States of America doesn't mean unwanted. I, I, I'm being very specific, unintended. Now, this may be not a big problem or it may be a real big problem for that particular patient. And so we really feel very strongly that we should try to plan uh, to have pregnancies because I think it really uh, improves uh, both the happiness of the mother and the family, but also from health perspective. Absolutely. Now, Stranger Hospital recently underwent a renovation of its fourth floor to provide a more modern and welcoming space for women and children. What does that space look like now? Um, well, I'm, I'm very happy with the new space. Um, uh, maybe people you know, who, are, who are viewing this uh, discussion are familiar with some of our old clinics, and they're no more. Um, we have a brand new um, ambulatory clinic that is right on the same floor with our um, inpatient unit where labor and delivery occurs and where mothers would stay after delivery as well as all of the, the nursery facilities. And this is a very modern, um, I think extremely well planned uh, space that now ensures privacy, um, that ensures comfort for the patient and for the providers. And um, we've taken a lot of um, effort to try to um, develop this uh, you know, to be in line with what I think modern expectations are. Certainly our labor and delivery area where we have LDRs was modern from the day that the building opened in 2002. Uh, and so we really haven't made any major changes there. We still have single room birth, you know, where women will labor and deliver in the same area. And then we have more, you know, then they would go to another area after they've had their baby to have their postpartum stay. Uh, now having the clinic in proximity it's also helpful with patients that need to have advanced testing because we have an area on the fourth floor that we call an antenatal testing unit. Antenatal means before delivery. Mm -hmm. And this is where women may un undergo ultrasound exams or other types of tests of fetal well-being 
and having it in proximity with the clinic makes it much, much easier. So the patient doesn't have to be running around, you know, a very large medical center um, to get the type of care that she deserves. Absolutely. Uh, a recent report, America's Health Rankings, rated Illinois 26th for uh, nationwide health of women and children. The report called out several areas where our state performs well and some areas where that we could improve. Uh, one of the strengths in Illinois was the high prevalence of cervical cancer screening. More than 83% of women between 21 and 44 years of age in Illinois have been screened for cervical cancer. What does that mean and why is that important? Um. Cervical cancer, and I'd like to go out on a limb saying it's a preventable disease. Uh, the um, fact is that we now understand that the, one of the major risk factors for cervical cancer is having been infected by a virus called the human papilloma virus, or HPV. Mm -hmm. So now incorporated in the classic pap smear type screening is the use of the HPV uh, genetic testing. We actually test the cells to see if they're carrying the HPV DNA. Hmm. And if a woman has the HPV DNA, we now can break it up into high risk and low risk types of HPV. So the low risk HPV causes a common wart. Just like people get on their fingers or their feet, that's nothing to be worried about. But there's certain high risk HPV, certain strains, which uh, are associated with cervical cancer. The good news is, is that if these women are known to be positive for these, they are watched much more closely. We actually can do microscopic examinations of the cervix. The cervix is the, is the opening to the womb. That's the part of the, of the reproductive tract that sits at the top of the vagina where, where the pap smear is done. It's also, we can visualize it. And we have a, an array of treatments that we can treat these conditions before they become a malignancy. So when I see a patient with cervical cancer, and we do see them at our institution, I'm going to say that this is usually a disease of neglect, usually that these people have not been able to get adequate health care. It's not uncommon to have people come from other countries, or even in our own society. Um, there's no secret that our health care system is not reaching everyone equally. And uh, it's kind of sobering and it's sad, and Illinois is no different than most states uh, in the United States. You know, those people that come from high resource environment, have good health care insurance, um, have been able to usually avoid these types of diseases. But when a patient has very inconsistent um, medical care and is not getting the screenings that can detect these problems at an early stage, uh, then we're, we're, we're faced with a much more advanced and potentially uh, life-threatening disease. And that's why your annual checkups are so important. Yes, the good news is, for, for the women who are interested in this, um, is that we don't have the annual pap smear requirement anymore. We now can do the pap smear every three or five years as long as certain criteria are met. And I don't want to necessarily get into the details. Well, that's, that's great to know. And we actually have a caller, so if we can take a pause sure. and we'll take that caller's question. Caller, go ahead. Yes, hi. I'm... I'm Something serious. I'm trying to have a baby. Um, I want to start, you know, going to a doctor just to figure that all out. And I'm just wondering. Um, I've heard a lot about doulas, and I'm just wondering: Are there any? Should I be getting a doula? You think, or like an OBGYN? If I'm looking into this issue. Okay, I think they are mutually exclusive. Um, mm -hmm. A doula is a birth companion, a coach. Mm -hmm. This is someone who usually is involved at certain points in pregnancy, especially during labor and delivery. Uh, that can help you um, get through the emotional and help you c coach during labor because, you know, it's, you know, labor can be a little frightening. It can definitely be uncomfortable. The obstetrician, the OBGYN, or a family physician who practices obstetrics um, is definitely necessary. This is so the, 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 they, they, they are not, they're two separate issues because that's the doctor, the physician, who's going to be mm -hmm. providing care for you. Um, mm -hmm. Midwives, who are nurses, who have special advanced master's degree training, can also provide prenatal care and can also uh, be involved in, in delivery. Uh, usually midwives work with a team with, with obstetricians, same way family physicians at our institution may have their own patients, but they also work in team with the obstetricians, who have a little bit different training 
and are, are equipped to handle um, some bigger problems that may, that may occur. Got it. Thanks for clearing that up. Thank you for calling. Uh, as you mentioned before, uh, a little bit earlier, um, access to care is really important. So uh, the America's Health Rankings report noted that Illinois had a very low percentage of publicly funded programs to meet women's health care needs. Uh, is that something that you see, and what is the Cook County Health and Hospital System um, doing to ensure access to care for women in our area? Okay. So my first comment is those of you who live in Cook County or in the um, collar counties around the Chicagoland area are very fortunate because there's no shortage of health care providers and fine institutions as well as the access to care. If you look at downstate Illinois and like you go south of Springfield and if you're not near St. Louis you may go hundreds and hundreds of miles before you're going to find a, an OB provider and that's really a tragedy. But in uh, Cook County uh, the Cook County Health and Hospital System has uh, developed uh, a wonderful array of independent clinics uh, that are, when I say independent, they're freestanding. They're not necessarily attached to the hospital. They're out in the community where people live. And these doctors uh, will provide uh, care and the patients when they need to be hospitalized can be brought either to um, Stroger Hospital, which is our main tertiary care hospital. And then for certain things, we use the Provident Hospital, uh, which mm -hmm. is in the Washington Hyde Park area uh, on the south side of Chicago. And these, and we have, we have um, OB providers uh, throughout the metropolitan area. Uh, they may be obstetricians if it's for obstetrics. They may be family physicians who also practice obstetrics. And we also have our obstetricians practicing gynecology. Uh, and so um, there, there are quite a few sites. And uh, we hope this will make it easier because clearly um, we realize that Cook County is the second largest county in the United States. And it's enormous. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like 900 plus square miles and 650 of it's inhabited. So there are many, many uh, people living in this area and we try to make it a little bit more convenient for them by being able to provide care near where they live or where they work. Excellent. Um, we have just a few minutes left, so before I let you go, I wanted to talk about one other disease that is really common, but I don't think a lot of people are aware about it. Uh, endometriosis. As many as 1 in 10 women are impacted. What is it, and what do people need to be on the lookout for? So endometriosis is um, one of these conditions that um, uh, is certainly uh, very prevalent uh, in our society. Um, estimates are actually that many more women have it than necessarily know. And the other problem with endometriosis is that it doesn't always cause a problem. It may just be there. And so I'm trying now not to get too technical, but I just want to try to establish something. Um, women may not know this, but the uterine lining that they shed every month when they have a menstrual period is called endometrium. This is glandular epithelium. It's designed to grow. And if a pregnancy doesn't occur, it's designed to be sloughed. Those cells, for some peculiar reason, can get outside the uterus and start to grow in the pelvis, on the pelvic organs, or they can actually grow throughout the body. I've seen patients that have it in their lungs. I've seen patients have it in their nose. Um, that, those are very rare. But the pelvic endometriosis, the one that we typically encounter, often will be associated with increased menstrual pain, so very painful periods. It may be associated with irregular periods. And in some situations, it's associated with infertility. So it may actually cause an infl inflammatory condition or scarring that prevents a woman from getting pregnant. And so in, in women who are symptomatic, we definitely like to make the diagnosis, and we have treatments uh, to try to prevent this from getting bad. So it's something that if a woman is concerned that she has symptoms, should bring up with her, with her doctor? Right. I, if patients are having increasing menstrual pain, so many days before they actually have their period they're having pain, or it's prolonged through their, their, their menstrual cycle, you know, their, their bleed, or they're having pain with intercourse, pain with bowel movements, pain with urination, especially if it's around the period, that's often uh, in, indicative of a possibility of endometriosis. All right. Well, Dr. Lynn, thank you for uh, sharing so much good information with us today. We really appreciate it. 
As a reminder, this is the Cook County Health and Hospital System. If you need an appointment, you can call 312-864-0200. Thank you.